Welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio, where we share tried and tested ways to grow your brand and get more customers. Everything from the latest in marketing and branding, right through to growing your team and creating an irresistible culture. Hi, and welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio. Today, I am talking to one of my dear friends, Shivani Gupta, who is a beautiful keynote speaker. She's a coach, consultant, entrepreneur, and also she's about to publish her ninth book, and she's got a lot to share. In this episode, we're going to focus mainly on exit strategies, and she's got three key insights that she's sharing with you to help you set up your business for a successful exit. Hi, and welcome, Shivani. I'm so happy to talk to you as always. Oh, it's so lovely to see you, Francesca, and be able to be on the podcast. Thanks for having me. No, it's it's such a pleasure. And and we, you know, we, we've been meaning to hit record for the last 45 minutes, but we just got chatting away about all <laughs> things life and business and, and juggling different areas of business and life. So we, we finally hit record. And what we would love to do today for you, our listeners, is talk about exit strategies and this is actually something we haven't done here on this show this show has been running for nine years 10 years i believe this year and we have not done exit strategies yet now shivani as i mentioned in the introduction is an incredible businesswoman also a keynote speaker a coach an author she's about to launch her next book number which number Probably number nine number I nine it hasn't, i haven't published anything in a decade so it's quite you know, it's quite confronting at the same time. It's incredible. So we'll, we'll definitely share that in, in the show notes too. And Shivani also had a successful exit. And you've interviewed lots of people on doing exits and learned a lot about it before you had your successful exit. So where do we start? Well, um, we can start at the point, uh, Francisca, because I didn't actually know how to exit a business. What I knew how to do was start a business or take a business that wasn't running well, that had lots of gaps in it to be able to then work out how to really stop those gaps and to be able to make more profit and scale it. And so when I wanted to exit, um, I was like, oh, okay, how do I actually exit? And um, I'm part of this amazing entrepreneurs organisation, which I know you are as well, um, EO. And so I started to speak to people. I said, look, I spoke to people when I wanted to start up certain businesses. And then somebody very wise and who'd been in EO for a long time said to me, well, have you thought about speaking to people that have exited recently? And I thought this was such a brilliant idea. So what I decided to do was I thought, let me just start speaking to people who had exited recently. And I call that within the last 18 months to two years. So anybody that had exited five or six years out, I felt that those learnings were perhaps um, perhaps a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit old. And I wanted to talk to people that had recently exited. And as I started speaking to people, people were so generous with their time. So they would share um, what worked for them, what didn't. And I also came up with a set of standard questions like, you know, what was your biggest takeaway? What was the lesson? What would you do again? Uh, what wouldn't you do again and wouldn't repeat again? You know, would you use a broker? And so I just came up with some literally made up some standard questions, which refined a little bit. And every single person I would ask that and I'd say to them, can I have 20, 30 minutes of your time? And some um, people gave me that and others gave me up to two hours of their time. And it took me about three or four months to talk to. I talked to over 30 people. And the reason I wanted to get past um, 30 people is because there's this, you know, little nerdy um, person in me that lives in me that when we get past 28 people, then um, then we know that that sample size mathematically is big enough as if we were, you know, talking to people um, on, a, on a much bigger scale. So I thought I've got to get past 28 and I was able to then speak to entrepreneurs, um, not only just in EO but outside of EO, but people that had recently exited all sorts of different industries for very different variety of um, dollars that they got, some that stayed in the business, some that uh, didn't stay in the business. And and then I, you know, did this um, Excel spreadsheet with all of their learnings and then said, okay, what are the three most common learnings? And then applied those three common learnings into my exit. And I can just say I'm so forever grateful for that because uh, I believe that I got over 25% more value in my exit as um, as a result of um, of what I was able to do. So, yeah, amazing, really. 
So, I love that. And that's your, uh, you know, also your engineer brain doing the spreadsheet and getting the significant number. And so what, what are some of these key learnings and especially the three? That, yeah, uh, it, well, there were so many, like there was probably um, over 20 key learnings, but the three most common ones that came in, and they might sound really simplistic, but it's so good speaking to people and then going, how do I apply that into my business? And then how do I apply that into my exit? And so for anybody listening, whether you're exiting or not, you know, just even thinking about how I can even scale some of the things and then at least having the option to be able to exit. So the first one was I was starting to get a bit bored in my business um, and I was then starting to concoct all these new ideas and all these new businesses. Um, and so the number one learning that came through was um, just stay focused on your business. Do not take the eye off the ball. What you want to do is just make sure that um, you don't start another business, you don't get sidetracked. A um, number of people quoted the, the book, The One Thing, just focus on the one thing, and it doesn't matter how bored you are. You need to watch everything that you are doing and um, you do not take your eyes off the ball until the money has hit the bank. So until you've actually got the money and the exit and the money transferred, you do not take your eye off the ball. And that was a bit disheartening for me because I had already kind of started thinking about other businesses. I'd already started speaking to somebody else who was interested in um, doing a JV with me. And so it was like, oh, what? You know, I just wanted to start this particular business and keep going. So that was a that was one really big key learning that came out. The second key learning came out was how do we squeeze every single bit of profit and how do we take cut some costs out so that when we are looking um, at our EBIT or our earnings before interest and tax, that when people, when the potential buyer or buyers are looking at that, they can see a much better and a much bigger number. And that was pretty tedious work. And again, we're always working on our profit in our businesses, but to really not to strip things away that weren't real. So like not, you know, not paying myself or anything like that, because I felt that that was then not very honest when you're trying to sell a business. But, you know, really looking at every single line item and saying, do we need that? Do we need that? And as a result of that, you know, um, in the business that I was in, like reducing stock was really important in terms of doing that. You know, um, in terms of even hiring better people, like the hiring better people cost a little bit more, but having the right people, knowing that that would become, you know, part of that exit strategy and knowing that you can say to a potential buyer, look, these people are basically running X percentage of the business. I'm not in it on a day-to-day -day operational basis, which then becomes a really big plus when you're trying to exit. And that, you know, that took a while. Like I was pretty good at the bigger numbers, but for me to go through line item by line item um, initially, you know, every week and then every month and just making sure as it led to the exit, that really helped get that EBIT um, part working um, really well. And the third one was really surprised me. The third one was where people were saying, look, I wish I hadn't stayed on to do an earn out. And, um, or I wish I'd taken some time out when I exited rather than jumping into the next thing straight away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was this mixture of, you know, so they were three and four, but very, very equal. And so for me, I had always considered taking a little bit of time, you know, having a week, go to a health retreat. But what came out of that was to take a sabbatical um, and I ended up taking a six-month sabbatical, which was very challenging. I know it sounds like a dream for many people, but when you're, a, when you're a founder and an entrepreneur, it's really difficult to just stop for six months and have yoga in your diary. And for me, it was then pick up the kids and they were like, Mum, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm just going to make you a lot of afternoon tea. They're like, we are very worried. <laughs> we've never, never not seen I'm you. I'm worried too. Them. Knowing you, I'm very worried hearing this. Yeah. <laughs> So they were like, what are you actually going to do? And then I didn't feel like I wanted to have an earn out for um, one of the, the buyers that was looking at the business. They really did want me to stay in the business. And I think, again, listening to other people and their stories, not saying that that applies to every single person or me, but that was a really big key to, for me to make the decision to not have um, the earn out. And even if I got a little bit less money. So I just had to really balance that out. So they were probably the three big ones. And I just went, look, um, you know, I haven't got this out of a book. I've got this from real people. So I'm just going to go really hard on my top three, which is how I generally tend to work, and not worry about the other 17 or 18 lessons. Just focus on those top three and just try and do that as the best as I can as I lead to the exit. And, 
yeah, applied them in. As I said, I've got 25 more percent likes. That's the power of the collective, really, talking to people who were so generous with their time and being able to share all those learnings with me was awesome. I love that. And and there are so many lessons in between the lessons that you just shared. One of them, and I'd like to dissect some of these. One of them is your approach to business. And I feel like that's what our listeners here can take away too is, is you may have a list of 20 tips from people who have exited, but you focus on the top three. So you prioritize and you go, you know what, I'm going after those top three, which is the same in marketing. You, yeah. you, you try 20 things, but then you very quickly realize which ones are the right things to really hone in on. And you, that's what you focus on for the next quarter. And then you may add something else or, or, you know, do something a bit less so that you have more focus on, on another area in, in terms of marketing even now. So that's really cool. I love that. The first point here, and, and I can resonate with all of these, but the first one, especially, you know, just focus on the business because as, as entrepreneurs, you know, we, we have so many different ideas. I think you and I, we would have started already 20 other businesses in the last, you know, we've known each other for maybe almost 10 years. We would have, we each would have 20 businesses if we could, because that's how many <laughs> ideas and passions that we have. How long did it take you then from that moment of realization where you go, okay, I need to keep, keep my eyes on the ball. And, and just for the listeners. So Shivani had a, a spa, a few spas that, that you exited. Yeah. So the, yeah, the I did. And also had um, some co-working spaces um, and some buildings uh, as part of that, as well as the business that I'd exited as well. Um, so the interviews took me about three months. So I know that sounds like a long time, but by the time you talk to 30 plus people and get in their diaries and put Excel spreadsheets and analyze all of that, that took me about three months. So it was probably almost, almost a year from the time I finished the interviews that I realized that, you know, because I was initially going, just tell me the learning so I can apply it and I can be done in two months or three months. I've exited the business. And I went, okay, so I've spent 10 years building, you know, these businesses. And um, I want to maximize, um, you know, some people say there's some great work and great quotes that have been said. You don't make business uh, money in business when you enter it. You make it um, when you sell it. Um, and um, so you want to you wanna be able to make sure that I wanted to maximize all that hard work, all those blood, sweat and tears. And I didn't love the idea of the fact that this would take me almost another year. I was like, oh, that felt really heavy and draining. But then I was like, come on, like you have worked so hard. You need to just stay in it and do it. Because some of that was a lot of, you know, methodology, like looking at all your EBIT numbers or um, just stopping, stop, you know, just focusing on that, um, the business part of it and making sure how we could do that, how we could collaborate, how, who else could we partner with, all the different things that we could do in it um, and really setting that up, hiring better people, all the things that we do in business, but really doing it with a different lens. And the lens was I'm going to exit and so now that I'm going to exit, I want to leave it in a really fantastic place. I also want to realize the uh, the dollar value of it and all my, you know, sacrifices through having babies when they were young and, you know, doing all of that, you know, uh, different things. So it took me almost a year. And then, um, uh, as you said earlier, Francisco, I, you know, I've got a daily list today. There's 17 things on my list. Um, to, to get through uh, done today, including doing this podcast, but I've got my top three that I will get done. And then I might get another three or four done, but I know I won't get 17 things done and then I transfer it to the next day. So I use that power of, you know, what are the top three things I can get done? And out of that, it's really critical for me, the first thing that you're going to get done today um, okay. to be able to do that. So just being really methodical about it, being really patient, which is not one of my virtues, um, is to be patient and just going... There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's a really big tunnel and you just need to be patient, how, keep breathing through it, keep making sure you've got your people involved. And, you know, uh, there was also this whole question, the, the fifth one of the key learnings also that came out that went in the top three was how do you engage your people, your critical people that are going to be part of the sale process? What point do you tell them and engage them that there is a sale and, you know, um, which part do you keep confidential, which part do you don't? Um, you know, how do you get them to stay and do you offer bonuses, et cetera? So there was a lot of those deeper conversations with people as well and, you know, implementing some of that um, in the in the sale process. But I'm so glad I did. I learned so much more about running a business in that last year leading to the exit um, than I think sometimes I did in other previous years where I was just, you know, you get on with it and you're running a business because you're looking at things going. And so now for me, I think there'll be some businesses I won't sell, like my coaching and speaking business, 
But if there's other bills, businesses I build, I think I'll set them up with a different lens based on that year's experience because now it would be really interesting to go, okay, if I was building that to sell, to exit, then I think I'll build it very differently now having gone through that process than I would have other businesses where you just kind of started and get into it. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, you know, well, two things. One is just a comment. One year seems really quick, actually, from, you know, the moment of deciding that you want to exit to then actually exiting. You obviously put in the hard work in that one year. I always tell our members, you know, realistically, you would look at about two years from the idea of I want to exit to get the business ready. And secondly, you know, what you're talking here about, too, is we have to put the the big girl and the big boy pants on, you know, when you, when you exit, because when you're running the business, it's like, yeah, it's all good. You know, I'm here. I, I, I got this. I'm managing things and, and I can crisis manage. But when you exit a business, you need to have your, as you say, you need to have your people in place because you're going to be gone, Ski. So, so the business needs to run without you, which you so beautifully managed to do. You managed to get the business to a place. And that, that's obviously a dream business anyway. And that's the only business that is, is super valuable at an exit is for it to run without you so that you don't even have to stay on. As yeah, you say. exactly. And look, some businesses can do it faster. I'm working with a client at the moment and she is sick of her business, sick of it. Um, I can so relate to that. And so even just being able to share that story with her in a coaching conversation to say, yeah, I so get it. Um, but, you know, I think she's done it longer than me. I think she's in her 13th year um, of running this quite amazing business. Um, but because her focus is on there, she's not making as much profit and as a result of that her exit numbers aren't looking that good either so when she's spoken to brokers um you know she's not very happy with the numbers so either you have to go okay i'm done and i'm just going to take less money or you've got to really you know be able to maximize that and um um and there's a lot of lessons in in staying you know um because it felt like it wasn't it wasn't done and i think as i went through that process of that 12 months i also got very clear for example um, i had one potential buyer early on in the piece when I wasn't quite ready for it, but they didn't want to keep all of the staff. So I had almost 60 staff in that business and they didn't want to keep all of the staff. And it was an absolute must for me that every single person needed to have their contract um, by the new employer uh, and the new buyer. So, um, so I said no to that. And it also just really helped me get clear on my boundaries in terms of how I would operate or not operate. And none of that was clear to me at the start of that process that, you know, all that was clear to me is just get me out of here. Um, and, you know, there were some really, really valuable lessons in terms of my own values, in terms of how I want to operate uh, or I do operate, but also applying that into the exit as well. Mm, yeah, that's really good. Really good sharing. One second last question is, so you, you started in the beginning saying, you know, do we need a broker or no broker? What, what, what was your learning on that? Did you work with a broker? Do you recommend for businesses to work with a broker or not? It really, this is going to be a hard one to answer, but it really depends on your business. I always think uh, don't try and save the money on a broker. So I actually had a conversation with three or four different brokers and I asked for recommendations. So, you know, who would you recommend? Whatever your networks are, who have you worked with before? And almost interview brokers rather than go, this is the first person. It's like interviewing an employee. So interview the broker, see which one resonates with you in terms of their personality, in terms of their values, how they speak, how comfortable you feel, because you know, it, there's a lot of opening up. There's a lot of what I call getting naked in front of them. They're going to see all your numbers. They're going to ask you some pretty hard questions. Um, you need to, you know, really feel like you've got that rapport with that person. So get recommendations, interview them and see which one resonates. And after that process, I had picked one. Um, in the end, I had somebody that approached me directly um, and we hadn't listed with that particular broker, but I had decided on a broker. And um, I put her on hold, uh, the broker on hold, and then pursued that. And I said, look, I'm just going to be completely transparent. I know we haven't listed the business up yet. I've had somebody approach me. Let me look at it. Give me um, six weeks. And if it doesn't look good in six weeks, then we're going to go ahead with the strategy. And she was really, really fantastic about it. And she was so great. And in the end, I did ex uh, ended up exiting with that other um, buyer. Um, I've actually sent other, you know, work her way because she was so fantastic to deal with. Um, and, you know, I'll come across clients that want to exit to be able to pass them on onto her and her business. So 
Um, yeah, it's a really getting a feel for whether it's right for you. And I think if you've got a great network, then, you know, certainly ask around in that network confidentially because it's amazing how many people will know somebody that will know somebody. Um, and if you don't have a great network, I would absolutely go down the broker path, but still make sure you take the time to really pick and choose wisely. Yeah, that's really good advice. Thanks for sharing that. Any final words or final wisdom that you would love to share with our listeners can be on exit strategies or anything else. I know you have such deep wisdom on, on various topics. Oh, that is very kind, Francesca. I think if I can relate it to a career, I remember, um, you know, we were talking earlier before we hit record, as you said, that I started my career off as an engineer. I still use some of those skills, even though I haven't worked as an engineer for a long time. And I don't think you lose the skills that you have. And I remember a very wise person saying to me, whatever you're learning, Shvani, just put your heart and soul into it because it will never go to waste. Like you'll never, ever lose that. And you and I were talking about Steve Jobs before and, you know, when he did his calligraphy class, <clears throat> who knew that was going to lead to Apple and keyboards, etc. And so I always think that when you're in your business and it's really, really hard, you know, it's really important to fall in love with it, um, even if you're not going to be with that business forever and really try and enjoy it. Um, you know, there were elements of it. And when I look back now, I go, I just really... I, I was so anti pushing so hard against that business and the fact that I didn't want to run that, I didn't want to be known as that, that I think I lost some really some joy in, in some of those years of that in that decade that I ran that business. And I think my really big learning has been just to really enjoy it, you know, even when things aren't great, even when somebody that you really loved in your business resigns, even when your profit's not that high because you're doing it so much risk um, you, you know, you've mortgaged your houses and done whatever that you've done to be able to start this particular business and run this business and just don't give up on it, you know. So I often look at my business, you know, it was my first child before I had my two children. And so for me, you know, I want to nurture that relationship, even that means that when they're older, they're going to leave home or I'm going to exit. Um, but just, you know, I would enjoy that more and have more joy in whatever I'm doing. And obviously, having learned that lesson the hard way, I really want to take that forward and that would be probably the leading thing is, you know, whatever you're doing, just enjoy it, however long you've got it for, um, because then you'll go off and do other things. Yeah, I love that. Otherwise, it's almost just like wasting moments that it, and, and and I think about this a lot in, in life as you know, as you and I, we both have kids, yours are a little bit older, mine are still very young. So it's a it's a real juggle often. But then I feel like, well, but if I don't enjoy it, then what's the point? So it's a mindset thing. It's often a mindset thing. And I guess we each can find our own ways to to manage that and to to jump back into, hey, I'm here. I'm now and this is good. I'm present and then enjoy that moment rather than letting it go past. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you and I were talking earlier about um, that, you know, we would both start 20 different businesses because I think when you're an entrepreneur, you don't stop. Like I come up with ideas when I'm watching soccer game with my son or, you know, we're not going to stop coming up with the crazy ideas, but we don't have to implement all of them. Like just let that creativity flow and that joy flow. And, and um, you know, some ideas will be absolutely terrible and not worthwhile exploring. And then you come up with one genius idea and that becomes your core program or that becomes a core cornerstone of your business. But you've got to keep dreaming and just come on coming up with the crazy ideas, I think. I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your beautiful wisdom and your words and just being here with us. It means the world to us. So thanks, Shivani. We'll pop the links in the show notes. Also, I'll ask you also, just in case people are listening to this without having the ability to go to the show notes, where can people find you? Where would you like them to connect with you? Yeah, the best place, probably two best places to find me is my website, which is askshivani.com. And also um, Shivani Gupta or Ask Shivani on LinkedIn as well. Excellent. Thanks so much, Shivani. Thanks again for tuning in. And thanks everyone else here for joining us in this season, season 10 of Basic Finance Radio. It's such a pleasure to be here with you all. And I can't wait for the next one. To get more from Basic Bananas and to learn new ways to grow your business with clever marketing, visit basicbananas.com.